Stuka Joe here and today I'll be uh, filming a video different from the ones that I usually do and it will be about this game Crusade and Revolution. This is a game about the Spanish Civil War published by Compass Games in 2013. I've never played this game. I've read the rules twice but I'm gonna play the game and film it and you may say man you have some nerve playing and filming a game you never played before, you're going to screw up the rules. And I tell you, I won't screw up the rules. Why? Because this will be a different kind of uh, playthrough video. As you know, it is becoming the standard or has become the standard in the gaming industry that all these games bring their rule books. And in addition, they have a playbook. And this is no exception. This is the playbook for this game. And it is 56 pages long. And the playbook has something at the end which is interesting, an extended example of play. And this example covers one full turn and a lot happens in one turn of this game. So I will play the extended example of play step by step so that I cannot screw up the rules. And this will serve me uh, as a tool to learn the game and hopefully it will help you decide if this game is right for you and if you have the game you can follow along uh, and play it also so i will be using though a uh, custom battle display that i made to show the uh, uh, resolution of the battles here to make it easier to explain the die roll modifiers and column shifts that apply for terrain and other other things here so this does not come with the game okay well without further ado Let's begin the extended example of play of Crusade and Revolution. Hope you enjoy it. We begin with the first phase, which is the draw strategy cards phase. This is the initial nationalist hand of seven cards. There's, by special rule, this card, Air Bridge, has to be in the nationalist player's hand and is played as the first card in the first round of turn number one. And this is the initial Republican hand. The Nationalists play the Air Bridge card in their action round, which is the first action round of turn one. And we mark that the first action round was used to play an event card in the Nationalist actions display. Now this card is played for the event. And in this card, the event states that Sevilla is activated and we can activate an additional space and each activation can be for movement or combat. And reinforcements from the Army of Africa begin. So the Nationalists will activate Sevilla and Huelva for combat. So we place an attack marker on each of those spaces. And beginning in round two of turn one, the Army of Africa will begin to arrive. Okay, now we go to the action near Sevilla the cavalry unit in Huelva will be attacking Rio Tinto. There are three nationalist units in Sevilla. Two of them will be attacking Rio Tinto. And the African unit will not be attacking. If you see it has a black dot here, that means that it is not replaceable. Uh, we have three nationalist units totaling an initial combat strength of four. And that is the leftmost number on each unit. So we record that here. And the defending Republican militia with a combat strength of one. The fire table for division sized units is used because none of the sides have any core sized units. So we cross reference for combat strength for the nationalist and a die will be rolled here with no modifiers or column shifts for terrain or combat cards at this time. The die roll 1d6 is a one one loss factor is inflicted on the Republican side. So we record the loss number here. And now the Republicans fire back on the one column. <clears throat> Republicans roll a three, no combat factor loss. So as we can see, the Republicans suffered a loss of one. The Nationalists, no losses. So the Nationalists are the winners of the battle. Now the Republicans have to absorb the loss cause. It is a loss of one. The second number here is the loss factors 
that this unit can absorb, and it can absorb one, so it is flipped to its reduced side. And now, after it has been flipped, the losing Republican militia has to retreat from Rio Tinto. The losing Republican unit retreats one space because that was the difference between the loss numbers, one as compared to zero, so it retreats one space to Jerez de los Caballeros and the Nationalists uh, elect to occupy Rio Tinto with all three attacking units. And that's the end of the combat. Having played this air bridge card for its event and having an asterisk, now the card is removed permanently from play. Now it's round one of the Republicans' first turn and they will play an event, so we place the action marker for round one in the event box. The Republicans play this card, disembark in Mallorca for the event. It says that we place the beachhead marker in the space adjacent to Mallorca and also two militia division size units are also placed there. Although the units are not activated by the play of this event as was the case in the air bridge event that you just saw. So the Republicans placed in that space adjacent to Mallorca the beachhead marker and two Republican militia units. The Republicans have two turns to capture Mallorca. If they fail, the two militia units will be sent back to the Republican Reserve. As a reminder, we place this marker here in the two space of the turn track. And we remove this card permanently because it was used for its event and it has an asterisk. The Republicans played that card as a matter of strategy because the control of the Strait of Gibraltar is in hands of the Republicans. That means that the Nationalists would not be able to reinforce Mallorca at this time. Now we go to Nationalist round two and the Nationalists receive a unit from the Army of Africa. There's two choices where to place this unit. It can be placed either in Cadiz or Sevilla. And for tactical reasons that we will explain later, the unit will be placed in Cadiz. And the Nationalists will play an event in Action Round 2, so we mark that in the Nationalist Actions display. The Nationalists play this card for its event. This card ends the Republican control of the Strait of Gibraltar, and it, if, if it is played before the second action round of turn three, like it is right now, the Army of Africa reinforcements arrive sooner. And in addition, there's a minus one to the Republican morale. So we mark the control marker of the Straits of Gibraltar to the Nationalist side. That means a Nationalist player will be able to move through strategic redeployment units using the Mediterranean Sea. And the Army of Africa reinforcements that are earmarked for turn three in rounds two and five, those two units now come in at turn three in rounds one and two, respectively. And as a reminder, we use this marker, we'll place it here, to know that these reinforcements have been uh, moved ahead of schedule. And finally, Republican morale goes down one point to 25. Now, the reason why the Nationalists placed the African reinforcement in Cadiz and not in Sevilla, they knew they had the card ending the Straits blockade. So now that the Straits are in the hands of the Nationalists, in the next action round, the Nationalists could move this unit through the Straits all the way to reinforce the Nationalists who are holding Mallorca. Second Republican action round, they will play a card for strategic redeployment. Strategic redeployment and cards played for replacements cannot be played on consecutive actions and that's one of the reasons that we have the Republican and Nationalist actions display. You can play this card, White Terror, for strategic redeployment. So the Republicans have four strategic redeployment points, but in this scenario during turns one and two, both players suffer a penalty when they play a card for strategic redeployment. The penalty is one point taken off, so it is three strategic redeployment points. Each division size unit is worth one strategic redeployment point 
So we expend one of the three points to move this Republican Army unit from Valencia to the beachhead space in front of Mallorca. A second SR point is expended to move a militia division from the Republican Reserve to Santa Olalla here in the southern front. And the last point is used to move this police unit from Barcelona through friendly control hexes down to Jerez de los Caballeros, also in the southern front. Now the white terror card was not used for its event, which has an asterisk, but for strategic redeployment. So this card is placed on the Republican discard pile, which we will commence it with this very same card. Now it's the Nationalist third action round, and they will play a card also for strategic redeployment. The nationalists play this card, Famine, and it will give them three strategic redeployment points because of the special rule, which deducts one during turns one and two. First point will be used to move this African unit from the port of Cadiz by strategic redeployment to reinforce the garrison at Mallorca, which is also a port. The remaining two points are used to pick up Navarrese militia units, one in Beasain and the other one in Punto de Velate, moving them through friendly spaces and into Cáceres here in the southern front. And this card goes to the discard pile because it was played for strategic redeployment. And we start the discard pile for the Nationalists with this card. Now for round three, the Republicans play a card for replacement points. Republicans play this card for replacement points. Normally a three ops card will generate two replacement points, but this card specifically generates three as stated in the red print and on the low left corner. Notice that no Soviet replacement points will be generated because the Republicans have not played the Soviet military aid event yet. So we record three Republican replacement points by moving the marker to the number three box. Now this card is removed and placed on the Republican discard pile. It's the Nationalist action round number four and they don't want to fall behind on the replacement points race so they will play a card for replacement points. So the Nationalists play this card for replacement points. They will earn two Nationalist replacement points. This does not apply because the Axis military aid event has not been played yet and we record two Nationalist replacement points on the General Records track. And the card is removed and placed on the Nationalist discard pile. For the Republican action round four, they will play an event. Taking advantage of a lull in the action, the Republicans play this card for the event. Intellectuals and artists favor the Republic and it gains them one point of Republican morale. So the Republican morale score goes up now to 26. Because this event has an asterisk, the card is now removed from the game. And this is an example of uh, playing an event for the effect here, the plus one to the Republican morale, and second, eliminating a low value card from the deck. Now we go to the fifth nationalist action round. They receive a unit from the Army of Africa that can be placed either in Cadiz or Sevilla and we will place this unit here in Sevilla. Fifth Nationalist round and they will play a card for operations. The Nationalists play this card, Airplanes Disperse Militia, as an Ops card and it has a value of three so the Nationalists can activate three spaces for movement or combat with this card. The Nationalists activate Sevilla and Rio Tinto for attack and also activate Cáceres and note that Cáceres is in the nationalist zone that is under an ammunition shortage. That rule prevents the nationalists from placing more than one attack factor in the zone here until a line of communications can be established between that zone and Sevilla and the Nationalists will attack Merida with all three units that are 
in Cáceres. And note that the line between Cáceres and Mérida, this dashed line signifies that there's a river between both spaces. Three nationalist units with a total combat strength of six attack one Republican unit with a combat factor of one. There's a river between all of the attackers and the defender, so there will be a column shift to the left for the attacking uh, units. So the attack will be resolved on the five column. The nationalists roll a d6, and the result is a4, which generates a loss number of two against the Republicans. The Republicans, in turn, roll on the one column, and the die roll result is a one, which causes no loss factors on the nationalists. So now the Republicans have to absorb a loss factor of two. The Republican unit has a loss factor of one on its front side, so it is inverted to satisfy one loss point. And to satisfy the second loss point, the unit is eliminated. Because the loss factor difference was two, normally the attacking units could advance two spaces, but because all the defending units were eliminated, they can only advance into the vacated space, so the nationalists advance with both Navarrese militia units there. The next attack consists of the two African units in Sevilla attacking Santa Laya together with the cavalry unit from Rio Tinto. Here three nationalist units with a total combat strength of seven attack two Republican militia units with a combat strength of two. No combat cards are played and no terrain effects are applicable. The nationalist roll of five causing three loss factors on the Republicans. And the Republicans roll a one causing no loss factors on the nationalist. So the difference is a loss factor of three. The Republicans eliminate one unit and reduce the other one to satisfy this loss result. The nationalists suffer no loss and the Republicans have to retreat. Although the attack difference was three loss factors, the Republican militia has to retreat two, which is the maximum number of spaces it can retreat. So it retreats into Casalla and into Peñarroya, ending its retreat. The nationalists decide to occupy Santo Laya with the cavalry unit and one of the African units and end their advance there they could have advanced into Casalla, but they prefer to stay there at Santa Olalla. That's the end of this attack. Now we resolve the attack from Rio Tinto to Jerez de los Caballeros. As we see here, two nationalist units with a combat factor of three attack two Republican units with a combat factor of one. The nationalists have this combat card in their hand that would give them a plus one die roll modifier in combat, but this combat card cannot be played until the nationalists play the Axis military aid event. So the nationalists attack on the number three column and their die roll is a six causing two loss factors on the Republicans. The Republicans fire back on the one column and their die roll is also a six which causes a loss factor of one on the nationalist side. The Republicans have to satisfy two loss factors. They eliminate this militia unit for a loss factor of one, and the remaining police unit is flipped to its backside for the second loss factor. The Nationalists have to absorb one loss point, so they will flip the police unit to its backside. And now the attack has been resolved, and what's left is the retreat by the Republicans. The retreating Republicans move into Safra, and both nationalist units occupy Jerez de los Caballeros. And that's the end of the combats in this action phase. Fifth Republican action round, they will play a card for its ops. And they play this card to activate two spaces. They activate Peña Roya and Talavera de la Reina, both spaces for movement. 
In Peña Roya, the Republicans have two units. The full-strength militia unit moves to Safra. After conducting the movements, the Republican player may attempt to build positions in those places activated for movement where at least one unit has not moved. So, he attempts to build a position in Peña Roya and will roll a die to do so, needing a 1 through 3 to successfully build a position. The Republicans roll a 2 and a position is built in Peña Roya. Now the Republicans will attempt to build a position in Talavera de la Reina. A 6 is rolled, so they fail in building a position, but a minus 1 marker is placed to signify that in the next try to build a position, the Republicans will have this minus 1 die roll modifier. And the Republican card is placed in their discard pile. Last action round for the Nationalists this turn, and they will play a card for its ops. And the Nationalists play this card for two ops points, and they will activate two spaces. They will activate Santa Olalla in the south for attack, and Villalba in the northern zone also for attack. From Santa Olalla, the Nationalists attack Safra. With four combat factors, the Nationalists roll a two, causing a loss factor of one on the Republicans, and the Republicans with two combat factors roll a three, also causing a loss of one on the Nationalist side. A loss factor has to be now inflicted on each of the sides. So the African unit is inverted, as well as the Republican militia. And that is the end of the combat, with no advance or retreat. Now we resolve the attack from Villalba to Castropol. The Nationalists have two combat factors compared to the Republicans who have one. But the Nationalists played this card, Naval Support, as an event, and this is a combat card that can be played against a coastal space only in the Atlantic. And the Nationalists will add a plus one die roll modifier. The Nationalists roll a one in the two column with the plus one modifier, it is a two, which causes a loss factor of one on the Republican side. The Republicans roll a three on the one column, which is a no effect. So the Republicans lose and must satisfy one loss factor, and the militia unit from Asturias is flipped to its reduced side and retreats to Punto de la Espina. Meanwhile, the victorious Nationalist infantry advances into Castropol. Because this Nationalist combat card was used for the event and it has an asterisk, it is removed permanently from the game. And now before the Republican action round number six is the Nationalist attrition phase, where we check for unsupplied units. There are no Nationalist units or spaces out of supply Remember that these isolated spaces here in Granada and Oviedo in the War of the Columns scenario are not considered out of supply. Now in the sixth and last action round in turn one for the Republicans, they will play in a card for its event. The Republicans play this card, Iron Belt, for its event. And it causes that a trench marker be placed in Bilbao because it's still under Republican control. So a trench marker is placed in Bilbao, which is one of the Republican main cities in this game. And this card is removed permanently from play. Now it's the Republican attrition phase, and similarly, there are no Republican units out of supply. Now we go to the war status phase, but there is no change applied to victory points or Republican morale, and no player has achieved the automatic victory conditions. So we go to the replacement phase. We execute the Republican replacement phase first. The Republicans have three replacement points, and in this game you have to use them all. You cannot accumulate them from turn to turn, so they will use their three replacement points. Half a point is used to flip a reduced division size unit to full strength. So half a point will be used for each one of these two units 
In total, one point is used to rebuild the units in Safra. Another half point is used to rebuild the reduced unit in Peñarroya. Another half point is used to rebuild the Asturian militia in Punto de la Espina for two replacement points already used. And finally, the third replacement point is spent by moving the eliminated militia unit to the Republican Reserve. The Nationalists now spend two replacement points. The half point is used to flip the Navarrese militia in Pamplona and the infantry in Jaca. Half a point is used to flip to full strength the police unit in Jerez de los Caballeros. And the last half point is used to flip the infantry in Arcos de la Frontera. And then we end the turn by moving the turn marker to turn number two. And as you see, the nationalists are on their way to establish a line of communications from Sevilla to their units in northern and central Spain so that they will not be burdened by ammunition shortage. And that concludes our extended example of play. I hope this has been helpful for those who do not have the game. This is a game that has been play tested extensively and it is a very interesting and uh, well thought out game and I hope that uh, you enjoy the game as I am enjoying it. So this is Stuka Joe signing off and see you next time.